think Proust was brought up in a very cultured um, milieu, and he, you know, he loved the music of Beethoven. He loved Schumann. He loved Chopin. Particularly loved Wagner. I think you know he was he was steeped in music from an early age, but of course he was I'm sure. It made him love the salons more because, because of the music they could hear. No. Bruce does not like write like a musician. He writes like an outsider looking in with incredible curiosity and just this sort of microscopic gaze that just bores into a into this little phrase, um, supposedly from the Sanson Sonata, and just. It's like he's got a microscope, it really is. He just goes in and in and in and talks more and more and more about it. In a way, a musician, musician never would. We never need to. Um, you know, it would actually be, I think, damaging to, for a musician to look at music in such detail or to try and describe it in such detail. Um, for us, music is notes. And of course, many images come to mind for music. And, and But it's, it's more important for us to know that so the shape of a phrase, the, the context, the emotion, everything, rather than to look and look and look and try and suck every atom out of it, as Bruce does. But it's fascinating. And in, in a way, it's a great description of, um, I'm sort of presuming he's inspired by the second subject of the first movement of the first Saint-Saëns violin sonata, because his description does seem to go with it. It's a beautiful description. It's just, you know, it sort of demands more of the phrase than there is there, in a way. Um, I mean, it's really just quite a simple phrase, and it's much more important to play it simply than to play it complicatedly, as Proust describes it. But it's very poetic as well. So Proust was, of course, a, I mean, the salons that Proust attended were at the centre of this incredible flowering of music in France, in Paris, uh, in the late 19th century. I mean, it's extraordinary. It's funny, in England, in London, there was an equally incredible flowering of novelists. We had so many great novelists, but very few great composers, if any. And then, but in France, you had César Franck, of course, was born in Belgium, but became French. And then you have Saint-Saëns and Faure, and I mean, Bizet a little earlier, but um, all these figures were all very, very worthwhile composers, and there are many others, women and men. The atmosphere of the salons, despite all the negative things, there's, there's, a feeling of excitement that something that there was a very special world there uh, that it, it changed people's lives of course you had to be rich enough to get into the salons um so i mean and as celeste his housekeeper said you know you can't understand that book without realizing that it's an elegy to a vanishing world I mean, it does conjure up a world that i'm sure is gone now sure even if people have wonderful musical parties and things um, it just couldn't be the same. So, I mean, the salons were the, were the home of music in Paris, and uh, just as much as the concert halls, and just as important to the composers' careers. And so many works became famous in the salons. And great works, too. And of course, you know, there must be in such a sense of competition, and that inspired composers to ever greater heights, especially Fauré, of course. He was a fascinating figure, sort of Jewish, Venezuelan, French. I mean, he's wonderful. I think his songs are amazing. And they, he became a famous song composer from his teenage years. He somehow made a hit and he must have been unbelievably charming and sort of good looking and debonair. And Proust obviously fell in love with him and they were together for two years. And Proust writes wonderful over the top descriptions of him singing his own songs at the piano. And that must have been a highlight of any salon. Uh, 
And then we come to Sansons, who Ronaldo Han loved because he studied with him. And Proust had mixed feelings about Sansons, but I think a lot of people have mixed feelings about Sansons because he was quite a vitriolic man. He was, he was tricky. <laughs> I love the story of his 83rd birthday party, at which half the guests weren't speaking to him. So one sort of wonders why they went <laughs> not to speak to the birthday boy. Anyway, and that's even at 83, he didn't really mellow much. Amazing pianist, incredible facility. Liszt called him the greatest organist in music. He was a conductor, very successful, principal conductor for a time of the Canary Islands Symphony Orchestra. But he conducted a lot. And he wrote these extraordinary pieces like he was the first well-known composer to write film music, The Assassination of the Duc de Guise. But also outside music, um, he was extraordinary. He was an acoustics expert. He was fascinated by the classics. He was a playwright. He published books of philosophy. He published books of poetry. He was a travel writer. He was an animal rights activist. He was an astrologer, very keen on that. And so on. I mean, he was a real Renaissance man, fascinating man. Proust sort of blew hot and cold about him. He wrote lovely reviews of him playing Mozart, and he wrote sort of um, very flattering letters to Sansons, and then occasionally he said rather nasty things about him as well. But apparently the Vante violin sonata was mostly based on the Sansons violin sonata. And then we come to César Franck, who was Proust's favourite composer with Beethoven, I think, when Proust got older. He adored Frank, he felt, he talked about the joy of his music, sort of redeemed through suffering, that joy. And there's the famous story of how Proust um, booked, I think, the Capet Quartet to come and play for him in the middle of the night, the Franck String Quartet, which was 45 minutes. So he sort of paid them to, to come. He was supposed to have given each a dish of mashed potatoes for some reason. Anyway, they arrived at his flat, they played this 45 minute quartet for him. He sat there with his eyes closed. Some said afterwards that he'd been asleep, but his housekeeper Celeste denied that. And when they finished, he opened his eyes, said, please play it again. <laughs> Another 45 minutes. Um, and yeah, he, he worshiped Frank. He adored his music. I think Frank's sort of mixture of mysticism and and sensuality probably appealed very much to, to Proust. That, you know, there's something, there's something quite complex about Frank's music. I think there's an essential simplicity to it. The joy, I feel, also in a lot of Frank's music, um, the radiance. But there's also a lot of, like the piano quintet is a very troubled piece. They say because he was in love with Augusta Olmes, who was this French Irish firebrand with whom they were all in love, including Sansons, uh, who was actually rather more drawn like Proust to the other side of the spectrum, but he was in love with Augusta Olmos. She must have been quite a figure. And Fore is, for me, the most underappreciated genius, perhaps in all of music. I mean, of course, he's appreciated for a few works with his music, with his chamber music particularly. I just, it's just on the, as high a level as late Beethoven, I think, his late, his late works. And there's two glorious piano quartets, which are earlier, and then two piano quintets and a piano trio, which is beyond anything. I think the slow movement of that is one of my favorite pieces of music ever written.